In this video, we're going to look at three separate molecules and name the symmetry operations in each one. We're going to start with this molecule. It has two carbons, two fluorines, and two hydrogen. The first thing you do is write down E, because it's the identity and everything has that. Then we identify our principal axis of rotation. Our principal axis of rotation is the axis around which the most rotations happen. This molecule only has one axis of rotation, through here. Now that we have identified our principal axis, a C2, since it can only rotate twice to go back to the original, we have to find all of the planes of symmetry that either intersect it or go perpendicular to it. In this case it's really easy, since we only have one and the molecule is really flat, we can try reflecting along the molecule, and we'll notice the front is the same as the back, so we have one sigma v. It's called a sigma v because it intersects our axis. The plane goes right through our axis. We also have another sigma v that goes top to bottom, so this reflects the top and bottom, and it's a v because it goes along our axis. Our second molecule is planar methane. Let's identify the principal axis of rotation. We have C2s, two of them, and we have one C4 right through here. Since the C4 has the biggest number, 4, it's the principal axis. Now we're going to try to find all of the planes of symmetry that go through this, and bear with me because it's a lot of them. We're going to start with all the symmetry planes that go along this axis. We can divide the molecule this way, so that the left and right are identical. We can divide the molecule this way, so that the front and back are identical. And in both cases, they intersect right where our principal axis of rotation is. So both of these are going to be sigma v's. There's also, if our axis is here, a plane of symmetry through here, so the left and right of my hand are basically identical, and a plane of symmetry through here. Since these go in between bonds, and they don't cross a bond at any point, but they contain the principal axis, we're going to call these sigma d's. So we have two sigma v's and two sigma d's. We also have a sigma h. If our axis is here, and we reflect perpendicular to it, the top and the bottom of the molecule are the same, so since the axis is here and we're perpendicular to it, and a reflection can happen, this is a sigma h. All sigma h's are perpendicular to the principal axis of rotation. Now we're going to look for all of the weird types of symmetry, like inversions and improper rotations. There's a very simple rule for finding improper rotations and inversions. Inversions are simple. You find the center of your molecule, and you find an atom, draw a line straight through the center, and then straight across to the other side. Straight line. And if the atom you get at one side is the same as the atom you get at the other, you have inversion. And in this case, we definitely have inversion this way and this way. So all of our atoms invert. If you have a sigma h, and if you have a cn, meaning any kind of c axis, like a c2 or a c4, we also have an S, an improper rotation. In this case, we have a principal C4 axis, and we have a sigma H. That means that we have an S4 axis of rotation. So even if you don't see it, Cn plus sigma H equals Sn. Basically, it means we can turn the molecule one rotation and do a sigma H reflection. So it's identical. We can do it again, and again, and again, and we get back the same thing. So this molecule, to sum it all up, has two C2 axes, one C4 axis, two sigma v's, two sigma d's, one sigma h, it has inversion, and it has an S4 axis of rotation. Now we have PF5. It's a trigonal bipyramidal molecule. 
And it helps to know the shape of it, trigonal by pyramidal, because then you know by trigonal that you're looking at three atoms separated by 120 degrees. So you can use this plane as sort of a basis for what your rotations are going to be. A principal C3 axis of rotation. We also have, and here's the tricky part, a C2 this way. We have a C2 for this atom as well. And we have a C2 for this atom. So all three of our atoms in our triangle contain a C2 axis through each one. These guys on the sides of the triangle contain our principal C3 axis. Now we have to find all of the planes of symmetry that lie along or perpendicular to this C3 axis. Well, we can cut it in half this way, this way, or this way. And all three of these go right through our principal axis of rotation. Since they all go through the axis of rotation, and they all go through bonds, we have three sigma v's. If this is our C3 axis rotating, is there anything perpendicular to it? We have a sigma a. So far we have a C3, three C2s, and three sigma v's, and one sigma h. And don't forget e. Now that we have e and our principal axis and all of our sigmas done, we have to find our inversions and improper axes of rotation. This molecule, does it have inversion? We go from one atom to the center, straight across, nothing. Since there's nothing here, there's no inversion in this molecule. As soon as you find one atom that breaks the rule, one atom where no inversion occurs, the molecule does not have inversion. So we're done looking, no inversion. Next, remember we had a sigma h and we had a c-axis, which means we have to have s. There is an improper rotation somewhere in this molecule, and it's usually along the principal axis. So let's take a look. If we are down our principal axis and we do one rotation, and we reflect perpendicular to that, we get back the exact same thing. And we can do that three times. So that means that, yes, we have an S3 axis of rotation. 